it's uh, it it literally takes your breath away when the musket's firing like that. The concussion of it, it just it it pulls the air from you, and it just it's it's an awesome sight to see that many men lined up shoulder to shoulder, fighting, just firing away at each other nonstop. You know, where you can almost look at each other straight in the eye. This here's a Lamette. It's a, the original is a 41 caliber, nine shot. It was a very brave among Confederate cavalrymen. Jeb Stewart carried one. Beauregard carried one because of its uh, large capacity of ammunition. You could you could shoot with it, and uh, that shotgun on the on the bottom, you know, it uh, it makes a, it take out a few when you need them to. My name is Sergeant David Riggs, Baltman's Battery German Light Artillery. I'm about to go through the loading procedure of a three-inch ordnance rifle as the standards of 1863 Army regulations. On the command of load without canister load, the number three man will step in and cover the vent hole. Brush it and cover it. At this point, the number one man and number two man will step in together. The number two man will bring back his worm. Send it down to two. This is used to extract any extra material left in the previous round. Then the number one man will insert the sponge, which is used to put out any embers that may be left in there. Last thing you want to do is have a hot ember when you put a round down there, because then bad things happen. At this point, the powder monkey will come up, display the round to the number two man. Number two man will take the round and insert it into the bore. He will not step out. Now, number one man will insert the rammer and ram the charge home. And will now step out. This point, at the ready command, the number four man and the number three man will step in. The number three man will print the charge with the vent print. And the number four man will insert the priming wire. The number three man will then hold the cord until the lanyard has taken the straight. Number four man nods the number three man out. Now, the gun is now ready to be fired. All the number four man waits is for the gunner's command. Fire! This cartridge generally holds about 65 grains of powder. Basically, the round would be in the top, and when you tar it, you would hold the round in your mouth, you would tear it, per se, you would take the round, keep it in your mouth, Okay, you take the powder down the barrel, per se. Okay, you would just whip the round, take it out of your mouth, put it in, load it, put it all the way down, retrieve it, be sure you put it back in where it is. You don't want to lose your ramrod because if you don't, you pretty much can't load it. All right, the cap is made of brass. All right, it has a green inside with a fulminated mercury. Okay, it is pretty much takes the place of what the old uh, flint box was. Instead of priming the pan, you put it on a nipple. They placed that in about the 1840s, and everything became percussion. The cap goes on the nipple. Be sure you have it on half, half cock. Okay, the old thing is don't go around half cock. That's about exactly what it's saying. It's not ready to fire until you put it back full cock, and it's ready, okay? Now it's ready. 